Hey, what's up guys? This is Ephros here and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about the Malaysian legal system as well as the constitutional law. Before we proceed, we shall dive into the topic of Malaysian legal system first in order for us to understand the Malaysian constitutional law. What I have with me is the Malaysian federal constitution. It consists of 183 articles and several schedules. Most of your time studying law will be mostly based on this. Before we have a lengthy discussion on the Malaysian federal constitution, it is important for us to understand the Malaysian legal system first and its history. Before the British came and colonized Malaysia, starting with Malacca and then all the states in Malaysia, we had our own local Islamic laws. We had sultans in each state as well as on the island of Borneo led by the Sultan of Brunei. The local laws in Malaysia consisted of Adat Temenggong as well as Adat Merpati. Adat Temenggong focuses more on the Islamic aspects of Islamic Sharia law, especially on the Fara'id distribution of land, whereas Merpati law is more on the matrilineal side, where women has more rights as compared to men, as men can survive on their own will and on their own vocations. That is until when the British came and colonized Malaysia. Apart from Malacca, which was surrendered by the Dutch to the English in 1821 or 1824, the British also came to Penang and Singapore, thus beginning the first ever version of the Malaysian legal system, which is just basically a succession or the continuation of the British legal system. This came with the Charter of Justice. There were several amendments and changes towards the Charter of Justice, until one day, when the British colonized all of the peninsula of Malaysia, they tried to form the Malayan Union, which was then opposed and became unsuccessful. Later, the peninsular Malaysia or Semenanjung Malaysia achieved chief independence with the federal constitution. And this federal constitution also extended to Sabah, Sarawak, and Singapore when Malaya to form Malaysia, which then Singapore left in 1965. And therefore brings us to our modern federal constitution which has been amended until this very day. In our Malaysian legal system, we have different branches of government, which are the executive, judiciary, and legislative. Does Malaysia practice full separation powers? That is for us to decide as future lawyers. It is entirely dependent on our own answers. But most of the time, in Malaysia, there is no complete separation of powers between these, within these three branches. Sometimes the executive intervenes within the legislative and sometimes the legislative intervenes within the judiciary. We can now focus on the federal constitution itself. According to Article 4 of the federal constitution, this constitution is the supreme law of the land. Without the federal constitution, there will be no country known as Malaysia and there will be no people known as Malaysians. This tells the whole world that we are a country and we have our own people. Afterwards, we have Article 3 of the federal constitution, which states that Islam is the official religion. However, because we mentioned that the British came and colonized Malaysia, Islamic law applied in Malaysia is only limited to personal matters. For instances, Islamic law is only applicable in relations to marriage, inheritance, divorce, and other family matters. Afterwards, we shall now focus on Article 5 to 12 of the Federal Constitution, which touches upon the fundamental liberties. Article 5 is for freedom of liberty. Article 6 is freedom from slavery. Article 7 is freedom from retrospective crime, incremental and punishment, and laws that do not apply at that time. Article 8 is is for equality. Article 9 is freedom of movement and from banishment. Article 10 is for freedom of speech and expression. Article 11 is for freedom of religion. Finally, Article 12 is for freedom of education. For example, if there is a law that forbids pregnant women from working, then it may be unconstitutional because it goes against Article 8 of the Federal Constitution. The correct pronunciation for articles is, for instance, Article 10, Clause 2, Paragraph 8 of the Federal Constitution. There is no such thing as Section 10, Subsection 2, Paragraph 8. Now that we have touched upon those important articles, we would like to bring your attention to the executive provisions. The executive are the people who are actually the head of government as well as the head of state, and they perform daily governmental duties with in the country. For instances, we shall now focus on Article 32, 39, 40, and 43 of the Federal Constitution. Article 3 states that the Yang Di Putuan Agong is the head of state, and we, when we mention that he is the head of state, he has nominal powers. Article 39 states that the Yang Di Putuan Agong is also the executive. However, according to Article 40, since we mentioned that the powers of the Yang Di Putuan Agong is nominal, 
he will have to act on the advice of the Prime Minister, especially when it comes to dissolving Parliament and appointing the Prime Minister. According to Article 43 of the Federal Constitution, the Prime Minister can only be appointed when he has a command of the majority within the legislature or the Dewan Rakyat, and he must be appointed by the Yang Di Patuan Agong, which shall now move forward to the legislative branch of government. This can be found under Articles 44, 46, and 73 until 79 of the Federal Constitution. Article 44 states that the legislative power is within the Dewan Rakyat as well as the Dewan Negara. <laughs> Article 46 states that there needs to be a 222 members of parliament in Dewan Rakyat. The powers to create laws are vested between the federation as well as the states. And we have mentioned that it is between Article 73 until 79. The federal parliament can create laws as well as the Dewan Undangan Negeri or the state legislative can create their own laws. This is manifested between the ninth schedule to list 1 and list 2, meaning to say that the federation has very wide powers to create laws in relation to the whole Malaysian country, whereas the state can create laws limited in only their own states. For example, the federation can create laws in relation to military, the police, laws related to international treaties, and so forth. However, the states cannot create such laws. That is the reason why we cannot see and there is no police or military versions in state. We do not see that there is the army of Johor. We do not see that there is the police of Johor. We do not see that Johor can create international agreements with other countries. Malaysia, despite it being a federal country, the states have to surrender some of their powers to the federation. We shall now move onwards to the judiciary. Judiciary can be found under Article 121 of the Federal Constitution, which separates between the civil courts and the Sharia courts. In the civil courts, we have the hierarchy of courts, starting from the magistrate court to the session court to the high court, the court of appeal, and finally the apex court, which is the federal court. If any person were to commit an offense, such as murder, they will have to start from the lower courts and if they lose each case, then they have to appeal all the way to the federal court. The Sharia courts also have their own hierarchy. Not just that we have our own civil courts and Sharia courts, but we also have other courts such as the native courts for the people in Sabah and Sarawak as well as the court for children. Now that we have dealt with the judiciary government, we shall now move onwards to the remaining provisions within this video. We have Article 149 which is a law for special laws against subversion, acts prejudicial to public order, such as terrorism. This can be seen through the Internal Security Act, which had been repealed with the SOSMA law. We also have Article 150 of the Federal Constitution, which is related to emergency powers. The emergency proclaimed by the Yang Di Patuan Agong is not a military coup. Emergency powers is vested within the Yang Di Patuan Agong, and he can declare the emergency. Again, according to Article 40, the Yang Di Patuan Agong will still have to follow the advice of the Prime Minister. When an emergency is cleared, the government can create laws which is inconsistent with the fundamental liberties. If the government were to create a law to confiscate your house or your property, then you cannot challenge that law during the emergency. Article 152 is for the national language, which is the Malay language or Bahasa Malaysia. Even if Bahasa Malaysia is the national language, other languages can be practiced and spoken within Malaysia. Article 153 is for the Bumiputra rights. These Bumiputra rights extend to the Malay people as well as the natives of Sabah and Sarawak. Some of the benefits of the Bumiputra rights will include access to employment, education, scholarships, and other economic benefits. It may be justified in order to alleviate the poverty line among the majority people of this country which are the Malays and the people of Sabah and Sarawak. The criticisms oppose this because it divides and further segregates between between the racial groups in Malaysia. Lastly, in this video, we are going to be touching upon Article 181 of the Federal Constitution, which are the Special Courts for the Malay Rulers. The Special Court for Malay Rulers was actually created because there were instances whereby the Sultans in Malaysia abused their powers and could evade liability and there will be no impunity for them. This amendment or this insertion of this article is to ensure that, again, the executives or the young Bituan Agong and the Sultans will not be abusing or become an arbitrary vehicle of power within this country to rule or govern this nation based on their own whims. This is not to defame or insult the Sultan or the royal family, but it is to ensure that Malaysia is a democratic society, a country which abides by the rule of law, and that the Sultan could govern and administer the country with fairness and justice, and bring prosperity and harmony within this nation.
that is all that we have in this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys more in the upcoming videos that I'll be making. And until then, have a fantastic and awesome day ahead of you. See ya.